Good morning and welcome for all around the world to Structural Heart Life Cases, broadcasting directly from Mount Sinai Hospital in the Cardiac Cath Lab. My name is Pedro Moreno. I'm interventional cardiologist and professor of medicine, and I will be your moderator today. We would love to hear from you, so please send us all your questions directly from the website or on YouTube. And remember, all our previous cases, structural cases, can be seen in our website, www.cccLifeCases.org. And now I'm going to transfer you to Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney for a very interesting case. All right, uh, Pedro, we are getting ready here. And of course, uh, a lot of challenges uh, in this uh, little bit of, a, I would say, minor uptick in the COVID cases with my team here, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Gilbert Tang on the right side, uh, Dr. Kier on the left side, and Dr. Kini, and our fellow Prashant and rest of the staff, staff including uh, we have our, our echocardiographer, Dr. Larakas, and our cardiac anesthesiologist, uh, Dr. Benjamin Salter, and rest of Cat Lab staff. Welcome, everyone, and uh, we always try to show something different and new, and uh, we'll show this case. Uh, I know it's a kind of a series of cases which we have done. Uh, the tower, either tower in failed tower, tower in failed tower, and this is a little different that we'll try to do. Uh, so change the original valve, the valve fracture. So with that note, uh, let's start with our the presentation. These are our supporters, and we thankful to them. Uh, these are our faculty involved, which I already mentioned, and Pedro being a moderator. Uh, now, this is a 47-year-old patient, uh, so 47 episode, and 67-year-old patient. Unfortunate in the sense, had two valve surgery. The first aortic valve uh, back uh, in uh, 2012, and then had some infection and redo tower in 2015, within three years. And that time did a one-vessel cabbage also. It was a magna ease valve, 23 millimeter. Uh, and of course, patient with good medical therapy and now presented with worsening symptoms of heart failure for last three, four months. Um, and uh, actually, this is a good point. Maybe I can uh, stop here one and knowing that uh, expert opinion from Gilbert, that when surgeons are doing, at present our cardiac colleague surgeons mm -hmm. that are doing the surgical valve replacement, knowing that patient is in that age group, yeah. that valve may degenerate 10, 12 years, do we tell them anything different, what type of valve they should use so that potential for the tower in the future? Yeah, so, you know, this lady had the first AVL, if you look at it, 10 years ago, right? Yeah. So, you should be 57 at that time. So, at least in our center, we probably have done the Ross procedure on her for the longevity. But she had a free F valve prostate. Now, this is an interesting valve. It's an equine pericardial valve, which is very tall, commissural pose. But unfortunately, this lady only lasted two years. Yeah. So, that's why they put now a magnet yeast valve, which we know had a very good durability now with the surgical data literature. Unfortunately, in her case, it's also degenerate in about seven years. Yeah. So when we see the heart valve clinic, she was very reluctant to undergo another operation with another bioplastic valve given the prior history. Because if the next surgical valve lasts only another five years, she would be another uh, problematic. So, so that's why we're discussing the, con the uh, discussion between a second time redo salver versus valve and valve tower. Yeah, so other question is, at age of 57, yeah. somebody has a severe aortic stenosis. Yeah. We know that uh, you should get um, a Ross procedure, but people don't, you know, very few people do it. I'm a Dr. Al Hamamsi, the expert right. in North America here. We're doing a large number, largest number of cases. Yeah. And uh, so the question uh, comes down to, which case would you do a mechanical aortic valve at present? Right. Coming? So this, that's definitely a discussion with the patient. If the patient is willing to tolerate anticoagulation, there are some newer mechanical valves that will require lower threshold of iron or maybe not even needed uh, Coumadin, but that is still in clinical trials right now. But for her, I would say in 2022, if she wants a bioplastics valve, we may consider what we call the Inspirus valve, which has a hinge that potentially can expand for to facilitate maybe a larger transcaptor valve for valve in valve tower to avoid uh, patient prosthesis mismatch. Good. I think, uh, Pedro, this was a very important discussion for many of us who are not much preview to uh, the surgical valves, that any time patient goes into that range of 60, 70, yeah, 75 uh, years range going for surgery, we tell them that yeah, what type of valve they should use so that it's easier uh, for us when the valve degenerate in the future. 
So with that note, we continue our patient has been sinus rhythm, patient has AFib ablation, uh, and uh, not on anticoagulation. And uh, we'll just talk about uh, what exactly showed by the echocardiogram. Patient has both transthoracic and transesophageal echo. But more importantly, we'll show live. Uh, if we can show the echo, please. Uh, yes. And Dr. Larakas, is your stage now. Yes. Good this is the echo uh, on live. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. I have on my left uh, Dr. Uh, Lili Zhang, our uh, structural imaging fellow. And uh, as you can see here, the patient has uh, almost normal LV function, about 50 to 55 percent normal RV function. Uh, minimal matter regurgitation, mild tracuspid regurgitation, and uh, you can see here uh, in the long axis, uh, midsophageal view, the severely degenerated um, aortic uh, bioprosthetic uh, valve with uh, very restricted uh, leaflet motion, very calcified uh, prosthetic uh, leaflets. Uh, you can appreciate here uh, mild uh, aortic regurgitation looks uh, less today, but uh, on the baseline TE, it looked about moderate. Uh, this is the short axis view again, very degenerated uh, leaflets, uh, decreased motion. You can appreciate a very uh, small opening. And also you can see the left main coronary artery on the top. Uh, this is uh, with uh, uh, color, again, uh, mild aortic regurgitation in this uh, TE this morning. And this is uh, both uh, images uh, with and without color, short axis view of the degener severely degenerated stenotic uh, bioprosthetic aortic valve. Uh, this is uh, gastric images, uh, LV function again, uh, 50 to 55 percent, LVH, no pericardial effusion. Uh, this is the view of the severely degenerated uh, aortic valve that we use after the valve is deployed to evaluate for uh, valvular or paravalvular regurgitation. And also a point to make that uh, the regurgitation in this patient is valvular, not, palavar not paravalvular, which is very important uh, for treating this, uh, this uh, patient. Uh, so it's a valvular AI, no paravalvular. As you can see here, uh, Vmax uh, velocity, almost uh, uh, four uh, uh, meters per second, uh, 3.95, uh, peak gradient 62, mean gradient 37. Uh, this is the pulse wave uh, through the LVOT. And the, with the calculations, the aortic valve area measures about 4.6 centimeters square, severely stenotic uh, bioprosthetic aortic valve. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Let's go back to the our slide presentation again. Back there, thank stamp. So this is we have already seen it. Now the CT, um, uh, Gilbert, you want to talk about that? Yeah. So you, of course, with the valve in valve app, you can also look at what the okay. prosthesis this is and always double check. And you can see that this is consistent mm -hmm. for 23 Magna East valve. You can see the area mm -hmm. is around 363 no internal ID, mm -hmm. which is true ID is no around talk. 21. Uh, per meter 67.8, uh, LVOT is a little bit larger. Next slide. You can see a very generous aortic root, which is nice. You can see big sinuses, big sinotubular junctions. We're not worried about coronary obstruction here. Obviously, the patient also has a lima, the LAD as well. Next slide. And you can see here wide open. So that's why I think we have to look at the left main and the right coronary and also the valve VTC to determine if we can save to fracture this valve. And in this case, it should be. Okay. And you can uh, see access is pretty straightforward yeah. as well. Um, Sahil, you want to comment yeah. on the femoral uh, arterial access? Anything unusual? Uh, no, Dr. Sharma, looks very straightforward, uh, uh, especially in younger patients when they come for, you know, valve and valve, they usually have normal uh, vessels. But the main access is on the right femoral? Right side, yes. Right femoral, okay. So good. So now arch angiogram, uh, anything unusual in terms of sentinel device? Yeah, so we had a couple of challenges. Uh, one of them, the radial pulse was absolutely mm. feeble. Okay. Uh, we had radial artery spasm. And if you can see, there are a couple of bends in the uh, aortic arch. And unfortunately, it's the patients who actually uh, will benefit the most from Sentinel are also excluded because of tortuosity, calcium, and inability to get access in the radial artery. So okay. we had so, to skip Sentinel. Good. So basically, that as you know, uh, the central device is a default approach at Sinai. So every case we look into it, but because of tortuosity, because of absent radial pulse or origin of uh, great vessels, it is used in about 62 to 65 percent of cases. So one in three, we cannot use it because of various regions, and that's where we yeah, are. And actually, our single center experience could be uh, presented at TVT this year. Uh, one of our um, uh, fellows could be doing that. Okay, um, beautiful. All right, let's go back to presentation, and then we come back to the actual now. Uh, Okay, now here, this is the 23 millimeter Magna East valve, and uh, we have valve and valve positioning, as you can see here. Uh, anything unusual, uh, uh, 
uh, Gilbert here. No, I think you, what you want to implant is optimal. You don't want to implant too deep. Then you have a subannular valve, and you become a gradient will be issue, yeah, especially I'm... for this young patient. Okay. So you want to implant in an yeah, optimal can... depth. I think that is the key here. Okay. And so therefore, this patient had a, a the risk of second redo AVR was 5.2%. Uh, and uh, had a discussion and clearly felt that it's a good case for the valve and valve tower after surgical valve fracture. So we need to fracture this valve uh, with a balloon uh, valve plasty and then deploy 23 millimeter Sapien 3 ultra valve. And uh, as we said, embolic protection could not be done because of tortuosity in this particular case. Uh, with that note, uh, Anu, now stage is yours. Go back to the live floor, please. Tell us what has been done and where we are now. No, so if I think uh, we have done the coronary angiogram. Lima is yeah. patent. Yeah. I just have to show you that. So left system, we have non-obstructive in the sense uh, that's except, that the lima, yeah. except the lima. RC yeah. is okay here. Yeah. Lima is good. Non-selective injection with the good Looks distal good. anastomosis. So we, this is the, I mean, uh, ideally before we cross, we would like to have an uh, uh, aogram to understand ascending iota but based on the CT scan and normally you see that it was a small valve so I went with AR1 to cross but we could not and then you know you take a few views then with the AR2 I just want to show you there's a fluoro save we had to cross so you try uh, your traditional LAO but um, most often I think straight AP or RAO is a good view so you are on FOSS and then you use AR1 or AR2. Here we had to use AR2 um, to cross. And I think this is an important point also because there's a lot of teaching. Use AL1 to cross the aortic yes. stenosis for mm -hmm. tower patient, but don't do it in the in the valve. The valve yeah, because yeah. That's a very, very difficult because the AL will always point against your main valve orifice. So now we have uh, the valve, uh, the, we have crossed it. And now this is the, show the hemodynamics, please, on one side. Okay, significant. Pedro, you see it, very high gradient, as we Absolutely. expected, 50, 60 plus. And let's see from our uh, anesthesia colleague point of view, anything unusual, uh, Benjamin? Very well. All good? Yeah. Okay, bad. good. So we are all uh, 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 proceeding high gradient. And now the question so, comes is, which case you want to do a valve fracture, all valve cannot be fractured. Oh, okay. oh. And uh, so before suture, so implanting the valve, so what is the advantage, what is the disadvantage? A lot of people talk about do, do you do it before implantation or after implantation of the tower valve and so. Gilbert, your opinion? Yeah, no, so we wrote a, your, your intervention review on this topic about pre versus post fracture. There's definitely pros and cons. Yeah. So you pre fracture, I think you get at least expansion, so your new valve is not really under expanded. But you do have a risk of acute AI, and then you have to move very quickly to implant the valve. We've never had an issue, at least in our program. Post-fracture, you have a little bit of protection because you don't have AI anymore, but you risk injuring the leaflet, and you don't know the durability. And we actually had a case where we could not fracture, yeah. despite using cranky up to 20 uh, pressure balloons. So uh, you don't want to try too many times because you have to rapid pace as well. And also, if you implant the valve high to start with, you can't really fracture because it might fall short more, and you may risk a migration. So our program here tend to pre-fracture, but also have the valve ready to go, and then we implant quickly, and we let our anesthesiology know, let our team know that we might have a QAI. And I think this is the institutional yeah, uh, exactly. advice uh, recommendation because we had a one bad outcome on Correct. that case, which we said yeah. multiple we post dilated and did not open, no. and we kind of created an AI whether the leaflet got stuck. Yes, and patient needed urgent surgical valve replacement. Uh, so the key is that we all our teaching has been once you are planning to fracture the valve, do it before the tower procedure and get the valve ready. That is the key because you may not have much time. Patient may have severe AI, but then but you should be ready to go in. So they here as we see that uh, the tower valve is all ready uh, and we are ready to do a. Uh, just one more question for you and. Uh... Gilbert, uh, what about post fracture, Gilbert? Some institutions do yeah, a yeah. routine no, post fracture. Yeah. yeah. The question so what is, we part? are ad advocating uh, pre. So yes, post can be done. Yeah. Although they actually, we talked to a few people who do it uh, also routinely. Sure. They feel actually it's a, you can do a graded. 
Yeah. You do a dilate with a small balloon, then go check the hemodynamics. You want to bring it post valve hemodynamics yeah. is less than 20. Yeah. The and, other the yeah. other thing we've done is if the valve is not fracturable, we pre dilate a little bit so the valves can cross easily. Yeah, Sometimes nice. these valves are very stenotic and it's not easy to cross with either valve, and you yeah. end up getting stuck. And you, but remember with the SAPI, you cannot remove the valve yeah. afterwards to uh, to redo the dilatation. So, so those are some of the things to consider. But the team needs to have a, a plan, yeah. game plan. Okay, so we are going up with the balloon. Yeah. Okay, what size balloon? And this uh, is 24, 24 true because true with the balloon. fracture. It's a 24 true balloon. Uh, so remember the valve is 23, internal diameter is about 21. So we want 24 to really fracture it. And we'll yeah. try to do a cine to see that, that you do you really increase <laughs> the size of the valve and you fracture it. And we have shown actually uh, about uh, uh, the last uh, few years ago uh, when we did, we did I clearly to make show. Sure Yep, everybody's ready, yeah. That the valve fracture. The valve okay. has to be ready. Yeah, yeah, the valve has to be ready. Okay. Okay. Ben can G? we put a T up a little bit yes, so yes, we can see yes. this balloon? Yes, yes. Okay, you keep holding the wire. Okay. Prashya. I'll hold the wire. Good. Okay. Can Mag in one, please. Okay. Yeah. Benji, be ready. Okay. okay. So you do that ready. first and you down. Yep. 180. Okay, pace, 180. Long pacing run. You can start. Yeah. 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 It broke. It broke. broke. Okay. Pace it off. 80. 80. 80. Okay. Come out. Come out. Come out. The valve is ready. Okay. Yes. Valve, please. And we'll talk about it with a hand injection as well as a hand inflation, no, inflation as well as the, followed by with the deflator. Yeah. Both. Okay. Yeah. Pressure is come coming on. up slowly. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll have probably a lot of AI, so let's go. Push the wire. Are you showing the, the yeah, okay. TE live? Yeah, now you can show the yeah. TE quickly. The yeah. floor, please. From the hemo point of view. Although pressure is a little low, but uh, okay, valve, we can show. valve. Show okay. the echo, please. Uh, live echo. Yes, can, you, can you put some color, please? Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, severe. Mm -hmm. severe. Severe AI. Severe yeah. AI, yes, Okay. Please. We expect that, and that's why the pressure is low, and the valve is ready to go in. 23 millimeters, just... Yeah, plus yeah. one. Okay, 23 plus one. Skirt is uh, facing okay, down. Okay, I have a wire. Could you put some uh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay, go. Okay, I have wire. Dr. Sharma, okay. while the yeah. valve goes <laughs> in, what was the height for the coronaries here? About yeah, nine. CT? It's a nine. nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, about the nine centimeters. Of 35, but so very large yeah. uh, annulus. You remember sinus of valves are like 30. Yeah. So very okay. large, uh, I mean, uh, 35 and so. So yeah, therefore, we okay. didn't Advanced. expect we'll have more important than the Lima mm -hmm. to LED. Uh, mm -hmm. But this one, uh, based on our findings, uh, that uh, you have a, about 10 millimeter and the more than 30 sinus of Valsalva, chances of obstruction are very <laughs> less. But you are right. That is the biggest concern T when you can do a valve in valve. T can uh, come up. That of the yeah, uh, yeah. coronary obstruction. That's the valve major, major issue. Sorry? And it will become even major issue in this patient if we, good, after good. 12 years, 10, 12 years, when the tower will degenerate. Mm -hmm. yep. At that time, in terms of the coronary mm -hmm. access and coronary occlusion. When mm -hmm. we are ready with the valve here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Will I just? Yeah, yeah. So okay. Will, so will adjust. 180. You can deploy, yeah? Huh? I'm going up. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Fine adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yep, go. Oh, Take it all the way. Good, good, good. Okay, good. I'm eight. Perfect. Beautiful. Look at how well the valve expanded. Keep pacing, keep pacing. Okay, off, off OFF, pacer. leave off. the wire with one hemo. Yeah. Okay. Let's Let us the see the out. blood pressure now. We're yep. still seeing oh, yeah. the TE. Yeah, we can go back to hemodynamics yeah. right now. That's more cap. important. And then yeah, yeah, we'll come back good. to the TE. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are Very going good. to do a real dynamic mm -hmm. assessment. We'll put a pigtail into the ventricle. You have wire? Yes. Okay, pigtail. And let's go uh, the plus the femoral. Back up. It is back up, right? Well, we have a wire. One moment, uh, Benji. Here. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah? So you can see compared to before, let's show, I think, the audience the floral yeah. before. You can see this is before the fracture, how, how narrow the constraint that is. And then this is the actual fracture here. Right? You see that? How expanded the balloon, there's no waste. And then you can see the S3 is not constrained despite having a true ID of 21. So this is now fully expanded 23 S3. 
which is this is going to be important in terms of avoiding mismatch and also mm -hmm. potential durability of this valve for her. Yeah. What is the pressure? Okay. Oh, oh. okay, put some color, please. I'm sorry, what? I thought something. Okay. Yeah, you know, nothing. Minimal just, AI. Did you just survey the angle? Yeah. Okay, let's look at some hemo. These real life images. Flash, flash. flash. Great position, minimal mm -hmm. AI. Let's measure gradient. Please. Stan, can you uh, yeah. map mm -hmm. out, zoom out the screen? You, you, you can't yeah. see so the, the whole thing. The way the valve has expanded, in my opinion, gradient measure, should be in single measure, digits. Measure, yeah. Less than 10. Would you come out? No, no. If you look at the screen, it's too big. Zero, please. Okay, you measure gradient? Yeah, Max, that's all they want. There you go. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Max, okay. Yeah. Can we show echo on the screen, uh, Dr. Sharma, the for the audience? Okay. Yes, perfect. Show the echo on the right side now. Show the echo on the main screen at present. You measure there, please, yeah. We don't need floor. Yeah, okay, good. Play the echo now. Live echo here. Yeah, they okay. measure. We measure the gradient. Yep. Please, yeah. Good. No gradient. No gradient, yeah. It's... Uh, Wow, no gradient. Beautiful. Okay, it's let's uh, go to the hemodynamics. 20, Beautiful. 20, 21 and 10. Mm -hmm. 21 and 10 with the minimal PVL. Okay. Okay, show the hemodynamics now. Good. Guess what? Pedro, look at it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Beautiful. Bye bye the gradient. I can tell you this valve should do better performance than bad luck for this patient who already had two surgery. Uh, even the last one was just fairly. Uh, seven, eight years. Good so hopefully this one will give uh, double the digit uh, sustained improvement, 10 plus years. Whether it will be a 10 year or 14 years, we don't know. But uh, but based on the gradient and based on the echo findings, it's a fantastic. Yeah, but also the patient is well informed that she might need surgery later on. She's accepting that, but she doesn't want surgery now <laughs> yeah, because her prior bad experience with two surgical yeah. valve with much shorter durability than we expect. Yeah. So, mm. so okay. she, she understands this. Good. So the echo was done. We continue your vascular closure and we come back to our points. Uh, uh, any other specific point by anybody else, uh, uh, Pedro, from your point of view? So, we so far we have no questions. No? no, no questions. <coughs> I so, think it's very straightforward case. Uh, probably <laughs> one question will be we'll how can we over. prevent yeah, more degeneration here? Is there any clinical factors that Stamp? will explain yes, yes, the degeneration or yeah not really uh, well i mean uh, remember the the two so nice. recommendations uh, of the valve guidelines are the tower post tower you give patient ace inhibitor and uh, statins whether they help mm -hmm. or not is a different story this patient should be on statin because of cad had a one vessel bypass uh, so patient had been on statin but clearly you need to be a little more aggressive whether statin will prevent the subsequent de degeneration of this tower valve is, is still, there's no data on that. I mean, we have never seen any of the publication that uh, tower valve degeneration uh, that is decreased if uh, patients are starting in, in terms of uh, structural valve deterioration after tower uh, for a surgical valve. There are data uh, that in, in intrinsic, the native tower, that giving a statin, ACE inhibitor, is associated with the better, a uh, lower structural valve degeneration. So that uh, we routinely practice that. Uh, if there is a creatinine issue, we'll not give the the ARPS or ACE. But those cases, I, by recommendation, is that should be given. But that is it. I mean, there is nothing else uh, which mm. can be done to prevent the further valve degeneration. Uh, hopefully, a lot of work being done in terms of decalcification of the valve before de deployment. Uh, and the special treatment uh, and whether prophylactic ultrasound uh, uh, after few years when they start degenerating a little bit will show and the lastly which is coming up particularly with these valves that what about you do a periodic hemodynamics and you start seeing degeneration the gradient is zero now in two years you start seeing 30 millimeter then do the BAV don't let it go to 70 so this is where I'll show the late BAV to improve the valve hemodynamics, the concept which is emerging, and that is actually part of the complete tower trial. Mm -hmm. Complete tower will have a annual assessment of the hemodynamics, and once they start de developing valve degeneration at early stage, go back in and try to expand the valve further. And so, so knowing that most of the time it is a stenosis, very rarely occurs a regurgitation also, but a stenosis degenerates the leaflet. So periodic late balloon valvoplasty to improve the tower hemodynamics is the new concept which is emerging, which we don't do it for surgical valve. But for the tower valve, you can do that. 
whether it's a valve and valve or it's by native that is as i mentioned is the part of the complete tower trial which we are have enrolled and we'll be starting that very shortly uh, one point i would make uh, regarding gilbert's comment of requiring surgery after 10 years i think pre planning for tab and tab should also begin in these patients early on because if we need to do a tab in this patient and not saver i think we can still do it we have done pre planning for that so if we need to do we can do a supranular valve in this case in the future so it's it does not really exclude uh, future percutaneous therapies and something to think about in terms of hemodynamics and coronary reaccess very good okay with that note uh, we go to our presentation uh, which i always try to update go to the slide presentation please and present the latest uh, of the data so we have few actually uh, in the tower fields five publications i picked up uh, in last uh, six months there have been a many but one is the valve and valve tower partner two trial at five years late bav for tower dysfunction which i just mentioned you then understand. structural valve deterioration after tower versus sour at 5 years is the evolute trial then same day discharge after tower in this covid 19 pandemic uh, and then lastly tower versus sour in asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis uh, or tower versus just uh, uh, medical uh, waitful watching we always have spoken about based on the life expectancy we decide whether to do a surgery or the tie valve each all have their advantages and disadvantages but clearly i still think that if somebody is less than of course guidelines are 65 the so 55 65 the you have to look for to try to get a ross procedure right we agree yeah i think if in expert centers that would be ideal because it's your own valve right yeah. there's no anticoagulation no yeah. risk of infection but if not then you have to consider bioprosthetic versus mechanical valve and mm-hmm. then if it's bioprosthesis tower versus sever depending on the anatomy and the age and durability yeah so i i think lot has been written Balloon. in the surgical literature also whether you do mechanical or bioprosthetic and looks like the entire country is going away from the mechanical uh, aortic valve replacement they are going with the same small the of the uh, that uh, bioprosthetic valve rather than the mechanical valve although me- some of the mechanical valve require very low dose anticoagulation inr of 1.8 to 2 So this is one first report is the five year follow up from the part 2 aortic valve and valve registry for degenerated aortic surgical bioprosthesis and you can see here when they did the valve 23 mm was deployed in 69% 26 in uh, in 31% and big the original surgical valve majority were within 23 25 just like ours some get small some are bigger but just to say that any time when we talk about it the majority of the valve surgical valve are 23 or 25 mm right uh, yeah and i mean the, that's that's in this particular trial remember there are a lot of small female out there who get 19 valves 19 <laughs> yeah. would have been excluded in this because you had to put a 20 balloon expandable so yeah. those will have to then that's why you don't see any 19 valves in this particular study yeah. uh, so but that can be happen and 21 obviously is is also quite common but uh, you can see that here yes the, in this particular study 23 to 25 are the majority of the label valves and mostly they present as stenosis or mixed rarely regurgitation alone Jesus. and what basically shows that like anything 30 day one year five year that you have increasing event rate of the death Jesus. stroke Jesus. but Jesus. overall it's very important uh, that Jesus. it remains uh, constant Jesus. after Jesus. initial time one thing uh, that irrespective what on the right side up death and stroke with the prior surgical valve size subsequent outcome at 5 year did not matter why because 19 were excluded but not part of the registry what was very important was that you had implanted the tower valve if it was 23 mm xt or more than or 26 mm xt clearly the mortality or stroke was 40 versus 53% clearly the larger valve size of the xt partner 2 did better uh and this is they put it together here but of of course whether inoperable high risk or intermediate clearly the inoperable will have a high event rate but otherwise the overall patients did very well more important we learned that after that at the after the discharge the constant at 5 year the gradient remain constant uh, by echo doppler velocity and aortic regurgitation so valve remains like good this. for 5 years we have shown the data of the native valve up to 8 years and so but clearly that we know now with the 5 year 
a valve in valve tower for surgical bioprosthetic that's very good for five years and these are clearly see you see uh, the seq score uh, quality of life scores and uh, the heart beautiful, failure beautiful. the 90 plus percent of patients remain out of heart failure uh, after the valve deployment now very important this uh, inter with this uh, study uh, this slide that what is the all-cause mortality in these patients and you can see here that the male STS score, I mean, in terms of the multivariate model, STS score, but more importantly, the valve size. Look at the valve size. Uh, basically, that we know STS always will be, but valve size, 23 versus 26, had a very high multivariate uh, analysis with mortality. So clearly, any time, uh, this was the XT valve. Yes. So now question is, how do we translate into the sapient 3 in those cases? Yeah, it's hard to know because, you know, certainly the XT is a prior generation valve and uh, we know that the Sapien 3 is definitely based on the current data, at least the partner 2 yeah. uh, has a better, uh, looks like better uh, the, the, uh, results than the Sapien XT. Yeah. So it's hard to know w what this means. So basically said that tower for bioprosthetic aortic valve failure at high surgical risk patient was associated with sustained improvement in clinical echocardiogram outcome as well as mortality. Now this second concept by John Webb from Canada, they started that what you do a late balloon valvoplasty for transcatheter heart, heart valve dysfunction. So not only for tower, but for some other valves also uh, in a mitral position or so. So here is the THV dysfunction and you can see uh, of the various group of patients which they have from 2016 to 2021. Uh, and uh, the balloon valvoplasty was performed on those cases uh, and uh, a small number uh, 20, uh, the follow-up of 24 patients for one year follow-up was presented uh, in uh, just in Jack and basically showing that you see the valve on the left side in the center post dilatation opens up your gradient improves so just to say that <clears throat> in the tower valve at least we have that advantage after deployment we are not just talking it that uh, valve is done you can constantly, maybe just like a coronary, you have a little bit of restenosis, you put another stent and dilate. The same thing happening with the aortic Well, valve. we actually have done a couple of cases with their PVL. Remember, yeah. like yeah. recently, the patient had traced a mile before, but then progressed, and then we came back and with balloon dilate, we did not have to put another valve in. Yes. So, so, yeah, that's, that's a that, very good point. So what so happened not in not just this, a dysfunction, not yeah. just dysfunction. So in this, uh, these cases, yeah. they avoided the patient with the PVL, which needed right. another valve, so excluded. So they basically just to say that just like we have that phenomena in the coronaries, right. we keep doing it. Uh, patient have the degenerate, you know, intimal hyperplasia, put another stent or cutting balloon or astroability techniques and so. So basically that concept is coming back okay. again. And that is particularly with the, the aortic valve, uh, TAVI, tower, that you do a post dilate once you start degenerating whether it will improve the longevity of the tower valve need to be seen. These are the data for one year only. Right. And you can see just uh, that your valve really changed. Pre-valvoplasty on the left side and the post-valvoplasty on the right side. Look at that. Clearly, by doing the balloon valvoplasty. Now, question is, is it because continuous constraint of the valve frame by the calcium? Why even with the gradient originally, many times it's not only the valve degeneration, it's the, it looks like a valve is constricted and we did have one case, yeah. uh, which we, we we've seen. Like we've seen that, I think it's number of factors as you mentioned, but one is potential a little bit of recoil, like yeah. with a stance, right? There's a little bit of recoil. So you see on the left side, top left, it's yeah. not fully expanded. And when they post dilate, it really expands and that is a 26 valve. So yeah. you can see how, and we've seen that on some of a post CT follow up as well on some patients. So yes, you're right. I think we need to follow them closely and may have to uh, expand further to optimize the uh, hemodynamics in some of these pay cases. Beautiful. So balloon dilatation late after transcatheter heart valve implantation appears feasible and safe in appropriately selected patient and may result yeah. in frame expansion resulting in improvement in hemodynamic performance and PVF. But one, one caution is that you don't you want to avoid patients with halt. Because if you clot on the valve, yeah. then you do, should not do that because yeah. there's a risk of stroke. So. Yeah, and very good point. So in actually this paper, yeah. patient with a halt were excluded. Exactly. Yeah, that's that that's very excluded. important. So yeah. once you diagnose that, you have to be very careful. Yep. The patient with the halt are excluded. Now, we actually have the data of the core valve, QS, pivotal, and sertavitrol, just like others have shown with a five-year outcome uh, of uh, comparing 
tower versus surgical valve and this is very interesting and of course surgical randomized tavi randomized non tavi uh, the registry data overall it actually looks very good for structural valve deterioration happens less with the tavi valve uh, compared to surgical valve 4.4 versus 2.5 just half now also we learned that if you have a smaller annulus or large annulus so if you have a smaller annulus clearly that you do better with the tavi versus the surgical valve or even in the large annulus you have a trend towards improvement even 23 mm that uh, the better outcome although p value was 0.06 but trend of the better outcome but clearly that smaller valve make a big difference in the uh, tavi versus surgery in this trial pool analysis that every time you develop a structural valve deterioration you have a high mortality no. high hospitalization worsening heart failure and all composite endpoints so clearly that once you develop a structural valve deterioration there is two uh, two times minimum two times to four, three times higher incidence of various events uh, as shown in this particular study so clearly structural valve deterioration is a major issue uh, in these patients because they have associated with a bad outcome on long run so then we go to uh, same day discharge which is a protect tower study multi center study of uh, again by uh, taken from the canadians so remember they they are the one published uh, one of the case report uh, that patient 86 year old female got the tower in the morning and in the evening waiting for the bus to go back home uh, and doing the leg exercises is stretching so they actually took this initiative that what if we discharge the patient same day after tower so multi center protect tower study uh, and basically the concept driven because of the covid situation covid 19 pandemic because we don't want patient to be admitted discharge them so they actually multiple centers as you can see here 2100 <coughs> the elective transfemoral uh, and same day excluded uh, only 124 about 6% were suitable for same day discharge and once you do they did very good <coughs> as you see local anesthesia conscious sedation contrast use uh, and uh, balloon expandable was in 96 self expandant 3.2 and uh, uh, initial puncture to pre discharge ecg uh, about 6 hours so success excellent so yes in selected patient you can discharge the patient of course uh, the overall uh, the these patient did very well uh, it's a just a follow up of uh, uh, the 30 days and individual end point so extremely extremely Uh, only about six percent got the admission uh, we, for various reasons, which we know happens otherwise. But more importantly, that uh, this is an option which we have now. And they put it together that uh, same day discharge is very safe, very low complication, and particularly in the COVID-19 pandemic, which another resource for us to discharge the patient safely. Now we have not discharged the patient same day uh, at Sinai. We actually have discharged next day many patients, and this is actually have the nice protocol. from the protect tower that how can you do outpatient discharge the problem for us is in united states because very few centers in this enrolled from the united states is because of the drg the major issue will be down trended hospital reimbursement in outpatient tower patient as valve cost is very high 32000 for tower valve versus 5000 for the surgical valve so major issue here so clearly that this will remain a challenge in our american scenario rare case you want to do it is feasible we have the data now but uh, but till some reimbursement issues are settled i would definitely would not encourage uh, or advise people to do a same day discharge then go to the next very sensitive topic what about patient with the asymptomatic severe as early sour or clinical surveillance we have two trials and then of course we get to the tower so two trials shown recovery on the left side korean and from serbia Uh, and europe uh, avatar on the right side that weightful watching for the severe as is no longer necessary the trials have shown that doing a surgical valve replacement is much better lower mortality lower readmission lower stroke rate at follow up uh, compared to uh, weightful watching so, so yeah, surgery yeah. should be done for this these patients yeah. so now we actually have some patients in what about asymptomatic as who got uh, with in the evolute low risk trial who got the tower and surgery so this is a group of patient of the 1400 tavi was done in 725 uh, no. and surgery in 678 no. asymptomatic no. in who got the tavi 76 k 
क्या सर्जरी सिक्सटी टू ऐसे लेट सी देयर आउटकम एंड ओवरऑल यू नो द ग्रुप ऑफ इफ यू स्टार्ट सींग इट दैट देर इज अ लोअर मोर्टैलिटी ऑफ द ए सिम्टोमेटिक पेशेंट गेटिंग द टावी कंपेयर टू सर्जरी वन पॉइंट थ्री वर्सेज सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एंड दीज आर द इंडिविजुअल एंड पॉइंट थर्टी एंड वन ईयर सो इट सीम्स टू बी वी नो द डेटा राइट नाउ द सर्जिकल वाल रिप्लेसमेंट इज बेटर कंपेयर टू वेटफुल वॉचिंग इन सीवियर एटिक स्नोसिस पेशेंट दैट्स इफ कैन द टावी डू बेटर देन सर्जरी वी हैव दिस इज नॉट अ ट्रायल दिस इज जस्ट अ सब एनालिसिस ऑफ द सब ग्रुप एनालिसिस ऑफ द और इवेल्यूट लो रिस्क ट्रायल बट गिव यू दैट सेंस that may be in this asymptomatic patient tavi even do much better than surgery uh, just uh, this is all want to say and of course the valve area we always know that will be much better uh, the tavi in terms of the aortic orifice and the gradient will be much lower compared to surgery that has been shown repeatedly and so uh, and of course the quality of life improvement very important because your improvement in the tavi you see the the blue rapidly improved in 30 days but at one year both become equal so yes uh, the we all know that tavi will have a better quality of life uh, a cancer ct questionnaire overall summary score in asymptomatic patients and so so basically conclusion was the low risk asymptomatic patient with severe as who underwent tavi had comparable clinical outcome to surgery with superior valve performance and faster quality of life improvement they didn't make a point that there was lower mortality because it was just uh, uh, not did not make a statistical significance well at least from our side we have a good that is the early tower trial so trial has completed enrollment it was the same 900 patient asymptomatic severe as transfemoral tower versus clinical surveillance waitful watching and you will know the data probably another two years uh, before and the end points were the same which we always have been a death all stroke and unplanned hospitalization because those are the three important points which we know it's not only just a stroke death of course yes but unplanned hospitalization is also equally important so let's just conclude our patient with intermediate high surgical risk as yes, the five year rate of structural wall deterioration was twice higher with surgery versus tower this difference of structural wall deterioration was more profound in patient with the smaller but also new in the larger annuli echo derived structural wall deterioration imparted two fold high risk for cause cause mortality hospitalization or heart failure then valve and valve tower for degenerate surgical valve has shown sustained improvement at five year follow up in all the aspect late bav for tower valve degeneration has shown significant improvement in valve hemodynamics emerging concept 30 day data only but we need to see where we go on this further outpatient transfemoral tower in selected patients viable option in current covid 19 scenario cost of tower device remains a challenge in outpatient setting and lastly the increasing consensus for aortic valve replacement by surgery or tower in asymptomatic severe as patient to improve overall outcomes so we go to three questions following our true statement regarding tower versus sour valve durability in intermediate to high risk as patient except a uh, better long term valve durability with tower versus sour tower is noted to have lower structural valve deterioration in both small and large annuli structural valve deterioration patients had two times higher mortality as no structural valve deterioration patient and similar rates of hospitalization in structural valve deterioration versus no so what is the wrong answer answer d because there is a higher hospitalization in svd patients with otherwise then following statement is false there is a direct question false regarding valve and valve tower for surgical valve degeneration at 5 year follow up sustained symptomatic benefit in quality of life improvement sustained improvement in survival rapid deterioration of valve hemodynamics after 3 years and a smaller tower valve size has higher mortality versus large tower valve all are true wrong is there is no rapid deterioration that's very good for 5 year data which we have the third question following are the trials of aortic valve replacement versus uh, waitful watching uh, in asymptomatic severe as patient except partner 3 recovery avatar and early tower and answer there is a is wrong partner 3 is the trial of patient with the aortic stenosis against uh, the tower versus uh, sapien valve versus uh, the surgical valve with that note i conclude my presentation and uh, the uh, pedro any question from yes. your side <clears throat> yeah very good uh, ss thank you so much we have a question for our audience dr singal and i'm going to read the question in your experience is there 
a difference in prognosis of post-AVR infective endocarditis in TAVR versus SAVR valves. Yeah, so that actually was a paper recently uh, came with the endocarditis, uh, whether the surgical endocarditis versus incidence. One first question: Is there a difference in in incidence of infective endocarditis between two valves? Answer that is no. Every study has shown similar. Second, outcome with both. The outcome with both uh, the paper was in Jack uh, intervention uh, about uh, eight nine months ago showed that uh, it has an equal outcome. Maybe I can uh, Gilbert or so any other question. Yeah, we will uh, review in uh, J as well about this. So the the box are different. I think uh, that's one thing just between surgical valve and transcaptor valve. Uh, and I think maybe because of the potential sterility issue and also the patient substrate, right? The tower patient have been higher risk than the surgical valve patients. But uh, in terms of the uh, risk and outcomes, I mean, obviously surgery is higher risk. They usually have root abscess and other things. And there was a paper by Joseph Cabot that was in Jeff that were you referring to that compared to patient with palliation. Uh, and they've basically had similar outcomes, but those patients tend to be in shock. So you want to treat these patients early, but I think the issue with Tavra valve endocarditis is very hard to diagnose, right? You have the frame, you have mm. the leaflet, uh, you know, maybe I don't know, uh, Stan can comment on how you diagnose uh, Tavra endocarditis, because I think that's going to be more and more because more people are getting Tavra. Yeah, I mean, uh, with uh, transophageal echo, I think it's, uh, we we'll look at the same things, degeneration of the valve, uh, aortic regurgitation, abscess, uh, what about uh, something, some new modality on radioactive uh, tracing or, or, uh, or something like that? To I mean, look that's uh, some new techniques with the PET. Yeah, with the with PET. PET technology, yeah. PET yeah. technology for abscess and uh, infection on the leaflets. But it's very hard to pick up. Even our colleagues have very tough time picking them up. We've seen some of the clinic yeah. as well, if you, yeah. as you recall. So, so yeah. and, that's the answer. On the same subject, um, the treatment when you decide that the infective endocarditis of this prosthetic valve requires surgery. Let's say the infective endocarditis of the prosthetic valve is now a surgical disease. You exclude TAVR in all of cases? Yeah, so, yeah. so there have been yeah. case reports yeah. of doing TAVR in endocarditis, yeah. but they typically have been, uh, Sahil, maybe you can comment, healed, right, with yeah. infection. You I, want to call, yeah. I, I think the issue here is that Tavar patients, you know, there's not much difference, but the options are very restricted once you have endocarditis in a Tavar patient. Remember, most of them are high or intermediate plus risk to begin with. So surgical options are very limited. And there have been times when people have attempted doing a Tavar valve in endocarditis or valve endocarditis, but these are healed infections. These have been culture negative for many weeks. And uh, it's, uh, we really don't know what the long-term outcomes are in these cases. It, yeah, it, most of them require surgical explant because you always have a nidus of infection, uh, especially active infection. Uh, unless patient in high field and extremis, you can be maybe bridged to surgery. Yeah. Uh, like it's a QAI, for example, if they have a torn or, or leaflet, but it's not gonna be, a, we don't know enough that to know, say it's a durable solution. Yeah. Very good. So no, I think any, any other comments, Anu? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, uh, of so many valves that we have done, we have had uh, two cases. And uh, I would say one that was medical means responded to antibiotics uh, because of through the skin infection. And the other one had to go for surgery, uh, which I would say is rare for now, the number yeah. of cases that you have done all these years. But, but uh, the like I think the discussion is the, it's challenging. Nobody knows how yeah. to treat these patients. Yeah. These patients tend to have uh, risk factors for endocarditis to begin with, dialysis or immunocompromise. So. I think the prophylaxis has to be yes. discussed with the patient when they come to see you in the office, mm. uh, post uh, yes. follow-up. But that is the key, um, that discussion about uh, who needs antibiotics and very important that they need it. Yeah. So Dr. Because there is always this uh, feeling that they went in and they came out next day and somehow it, they've treated like a stent. You know, so it that, has that's very be, true. So, uh, do you guidelines recommend six months? What is your common practice? You do uh, lifelong, or do you do just six months? Lifelong, lifelong. lifelong. And I think that's process. very important yeah. to yeah. sort of uh, point out that in our practice, all of us we do lifelong. No, that's uh, why when they come to yeah. see you in thirty days, the more important one thing that you need to mention to them. Yeah, when you go to a dentist, this, take, yeah. make sure you take antibiotic yeah. prophylaxis. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, what about vascular? Is all Looks, set? Uh, yeah. Can we yeah. show the fluoro? Uh, 
on the that all has been done yep no, no. <laughs> no. can you focus the camera yeah yeah okay okay good if, go ahead okay uh, already uh, activated cannot be yeah. shown if guys can we come focus camera, the camera camera or so onto yeah. the groin <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what happened our already okay. activated the guy yeah yeah good see that all has been done uh, from a vascular point of view you did a per close or, yeah, yeah two pro glides yeah two pro glides and the patient has been extubated already yeah and yeah. stalking yeah and patient has been extubated yes and good, good, good everything good. goes well uh, right. very good should be discharged tomorrow we hope that way yeah yes, okay sir. with that note uh, we conclude our today's both, presentation both, uh, pedro yeah. yep yeah. well yeah. thank you so much for the hard team and thank you all in the rest of the world for joining us today remember the this case as the other cases will be archived and can be seen even this afternoon at www.cccclifecases.org remember our transvalvular cases are done every two months so our next one will be july 12 at 9 a.m thank you so much for joining us today <laughs>